Good morning. Good morning. This is Remarks Live. I'm Mark Morial. And the date is February 18th, 2021. And we're coming at you for just a few minutes. Thank you for joining. I want to lift everyone up during this Black History Month. And I will have some thoughts and comments later on some living legends uh, that I'd ask that you join me in saluting during Black History Month. But before we do so, I wanted to spend a few minutes to just talk to you about where we are in COVID. Uh, it is very important that the president, Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan, be passed by the Congress of the United States. Uh, we expect votes in the House next week and in the Senate the following week. Uh, and I wanna give you an overview of what that plan includes. And that plan uh, incorporates a significant amount of input that we at the National Urban League and others in the broader civil rights and justice communities have, uh, have urged. Like any piece of legislation, it is imperfect. Uh, but like many pieces of legislation in an emergency and in a pandemic, and we are in a state of emergency. This morning's news, uh, uh, as I listened, uh, they, there was talk about uh, the decline in life expectancy rates. Overall in the United States, life expectancy has declined by a year for black people almost by three years. The largest decrease in life expectancy since World War II. If that doesn't convince you that this is a state of emergency requiring significant, immediate, bold and decisive action, I don't know what will. So let me talk about the Biden American Rescue Plan that I've carefully taken a look at with experts here at the National Urban League. Some of the features of it that I think are very needed and important are an increase in, in the minimum wage to $15 an hour. It won't happen immediately. It will happen on a graduated basis. The Congress has not passed a minimum wage increase, mainly because of stalling uh, by conservative interests in the Congress since 2007, it is long overdue. That bill includes $1,400 in direct payments to individuals and families to offset the financial hardships caused by the crisis. It includes support for state and city governments to keep frontline workers employed, distribute the vaccine, increase testing, and safely reopen schools. Our local governmental institutions our cities, our school districts, our transit authorities, to name a few, uh, have been battered by uh, the shocks of this pandemic and are deserving of support. Over a year ago, airlines and hotels and others got a financial rescue package. Now it's time for cities and states uh, to be provided with the support that they need to, uh, to navigate through these troubled economic waters that we face. Uh, there is in the rescue plan expanded emergency paid leave and extended emergency unemployment benefits, a more targeted approach to the Paycheck Protection Program to support Black businesses and nonprofits, extensions of the eviction and foreclosure moratoria, rental assistance and aid for households unable to pay utilities, home buyer assistance, rescue, housing counseling, fair housing enforcement services, and much more. Now this plan almost totals $2 trillion. Some want a little plan, a tiny plan, a plan that I think would not do the trick, would not make a dent, would not be what is morally correct in these difficult uh, times. No watered down plans. No, you don't need it. You don't want it. It isn't right. I'm not supporting a watered down plan. We want a strong plan. And the American Rescue Plan is a strong plan. And I could go further, given the pain we see in our communities, the high unemployment, the difficulties that people are facing in meeting basic necessities, food insecurity, in all urban league polling, 
comes up very high on the list. Difficulty paying utility bills, water, electricity, gas, and mortgages and rent. Uh, that's challenging so many people. So uh, we need a real plan. We need a significant plan. We need a tough, strong plan. Uh, and this needs an environment where they hear from us. So 224-202-224-3121, 202-224-3121, lock it in. That's a switchboard at the Capitol. Call them and say, I support and I want you to support as my representative, the American Rescue Plan. Call Democrats, call Republicans, call independents. Don't say, oh, I think my member's gonna vote for it. No, call them and reinforce it. Reinforce your support for the full package, the full plan. Call Republicans if Republicans represent. They need to hear from us also. Everybody needs to hear the voices of the people they work for. So this is a promising uh, start. And uh, uh, we need to get this passed. The CARES Act that was passed last March, we mobilized, you called, people heard us, and we're committed to bold and effective action. Thus, if you are a reader of Remarks, Remarks, the weekly newsletter of the National Urban League, thank you very much. If you uh, don't subscribe to Remarks, go to nul.org and sign up to be, receive Remarks. Follow our continuing conversation on social media at Mark Morial and at Nat Urban Lee. Uh, we're going to be outlining ways uh, that you can contact your member of Congress in support of this bill over the next few days. Strong bill, important bill, the COVID bill. Uh, as we shift, January 6, 2021, a day of disgrace for this nation, the Congress of the United States, uh, Speaker Pelosi in the lead, have proposed a 9-11 style commission. My uh, belief is that it is a good idea, but I must say the 9-11 commission did not have an African-American member. This commission needs to be diverse. So join me in calling on Speaker Pelosi, Majority Leader Schumer, and all of the others to ensure that this, this commission is going to be diverse and representative of the entire nation. It is a good idea to continue to get the facts out on the table. There was the Warren Commission after the assassination of uh, President Kennedy in the 1960s. There was the 9-11 Commission after the awful attack on the towers. We've now had an attack, a domestic attack on the capital of the United States, which has cost lives uh, and, and, and was unprecedented in its brazenness, its meanness, and its orchestration coming from, yes, the former president of the United States. There must be transparency and accountability. It's not about politics. It's about transparency and accountability. So we support that commission, but we don't support a commission that is not diverse. We want a diverse commission that's representative of the people of the United States. And we will uh, certainly push this uh, with indeed all vigor. Uh, our partners uh, and friends at the NAACP, along with Congressman Betty Thompson, have filed a lawsuit against the former president and others uh, around the actions of January 6th. Uh, I think that you're going to see more legal actions, more civil and criminal proceedings around that attack, as there should be. Because there must be accountability. 
This is not something where you just say, let's move on. We didn't move on from 9-11, just move on. Uh, we don't move on when the very arsenal of democracy, the Congress of the United, the citadel of democracy is attacked so brazenly, so un, in such an unwarranted way, in such a clumsy and hateful way. No, we need to hold those that struck against the very essence of this democracy accountable. So more on that. Uh, to wrap, uh, Black History Month, I wanna lift up some great religious leaders, some living legends. First, a great, great friend and ally of mine for many, many years, Bishop Paul S. Morton. He is the founder of the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship denomination, a talented, uh, if you will, uh, musician and vocalist, a talented uh, preacher and leader and builder. So I'm going to lift up Bishop Morton with great thanks and prayers for his tremendous contributions to the times in which we live. I want to lift up uh, Bishop Vashti Murphy McKenzie, a leader in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, a pioneer uh, as a woman, a powerful, powerful orator uh, and spiritual uh, voice in, in our community and a great leader and a pioneer for women uh, in the ministry across all denominations. Let's lift up Bishop Bashtai Murphy McKenzie. And then I wanna lift up uh, someone I think uh, we all know and respect, Bishop T.D. Jakes, who uh, for many years has been a voice of spirituality, reason and interpretation of the times in which we live. Uh, Bishop uh, Jakes was doing prison ministry work before anyone else or Maybe that's not accurate, but he was doing it on a scale that's very significant before people began to talk more broadly about mass incarceration and criminal justice reform. Had the opportunity to work with and host all three of these great leaders over the years, either in New Orleans or at the National Urban League. And I wanna lift them up and uh, lift up all of those who are spiritual, faith, religious leaders across the board whatever the denomination, uh, because they're important leaders and they are black history because the black church, the black faith community, uh, the uh, uh, black faith community, be it uh, Christian or be it Muslim or be any other denomination has been so important to the work for justice and freedom in America. So lift up those three and lift up all religious and faith leaders of all denominations across the board during this week in black history and this month in black history. So again, I'm Mark Morial. This is Remarks Live. I wanna thank you for joining us uh, this, uh, this week, this Thursday. I'll see you again on Tuesday uh, for another, another edition, episode, edition, let's say edition of Remarks Live so we can continue this very important conversation. Thank you for joining, God bless and stay empowered. All right. All right.